Welcome back to the channel guys, thanks for watching. Right, so first job this morning is the valve seat inserts have arrived for the mini head. So, so these are the inserts as I showed you before and they've got to go in these holes which we cut last time. Now as you can see, I've put our glue in there and obviously like I said before, we're putting them in with a sixth out interference. And this is what we use to put them in. So this is a seal lock. It's basically like a fluid weld, high temperature. Um, yeah, brilliant stuff. Well, we fitted, put it this way, we fitted hundreds of inserts and we've, we've never seen anything back, touch wood. So um, we've got three in already. I'm just about to put this fourth one in and then we can get these cut. So they're all in now. All the inserts are in and the first process that I do is just top the insert off. As you can see, I always leave them sort of half a mil to a mil proud and we just top them off so they're the correct height. So I'll do all the other three and, um, and then we'll go about putting the 45 degree seat on there. So we've topped off all the seat inserts. Now we're going to set up the 45 degree cutter or the three face cutter which is this little beauty so that goes in the tool holder like this and as you can see you've got the three angles there the center one being the the 45 degree by one and a half mil wide and that is what puts the the seat on the new insert now to set this tool, what we do is we use this setting piece. Now what I try and do is ensure that the, the outside of the one and a half mil 45 degree, see in the middle there, goes right to the very edge of the valve seat. So that sits as far, so the seat is as far as it can be out on the edge and then you've got a nice inside 60 degree angle so you've got a nice flow there in the valve so what we do is we put that valve there in the setting piece so you can see there that I've I set that pointer right up at the outer edge of the 45 degree angle on that valve Okay, so that is the seat. That is where we want to be setting that cutter. So next thing is we put the cutter in the holder here, like so. Now what we want to be doing is meeting that so that the point goes, you can see, right to the very edge or the outer edge of the 45 degree and then we will know when we cut it that that valve is going to set perfectly on that 45 degree seat so what we're going to do now is we're going to tighten this up and i'm going to put a cut on one of the seats and uh, show you what show you what it looks like so there we go guys we've cut the seats now and as you can see we've cut the inlet seats too now you're probably wondering why I've done a straight 45 degree on the inlet seats and that's because what we find with the inlet seats sometimes if they're sort of getting towards the pocketed side we have to put inserts in those too but um, on things like these minis if we put a three-face cutter on there you find that the third angle all it does is just dig into the head and uh, sort of puts like a little pocket in there so we don't tend to bother uh, we just put a straight 45 in there and um, and that's um, good to, and that's good to go the customers happy with that he doesn't want to go for the extra inserts uh, so what we've done now if we've, we've got this on the miller machine and we're just about to set it up for a, a reface we'll give it a light lick over and see how bad it is on the head face you can see here where it's been 
blow in. I mean, this is usual, the usual suspect area for one of these minis because it gets very thin on the block in between the two, you know, three and two and three pots there. It gets very thin, so it does tend to start to blow on here. You can see that now. So yeah, we'll give that a lick over and see what it looks like. So we've started the machine and it's probably about five or 10 thou above the face, the cutter that is. So what we're gonna do is just wind the bed up until it just starts to touch on the head. There we go, you see it's just literally started to touch. So if we feed that back and we'll put a Three thou cut on there. So there's the these are the thousandths of the inch, so that's three thou. Bit of WD quality on the top for lubricant. You can see that's feeding in there nicely. So we've done a three thou cut on this and as you can see around here and definitely here it still hasn't cleaned so we're going to give this another three thou cut and hopefully that will be it. So there we go, six thou and it's all clean as you can see. So we're going to give this head a good wash, pop the valves in and that's all done. So that's what's involved in doing an unleaded job guys. I'm just going to uh, give you a little update on the kit car. We had it MOT'd yesterday and it did actually fail on the handbrake so he said you better take that back and, uh, and sort that out. So what the problem was with that we found is, I don't know whether you can remember but this did have an electric handbrake so it had a, a sort of on and off well, forward and backward button on the dash and it sort of wound the cable in and out in this tunnel which was great for a security uh, point of view really so when it was parked up unless the ignition key was in the, the handbrake wouldn't work and the back wheels were locked on so it was great for that but in traffic it was absolutely crap because obviously you had no feel of the, um, of the handbrake being on so we put a good old-fashioned manual handbrake in there and that is just attached to the cable as they normally are uh, but what the problem was it was we've sort of made our own adjuster in there and it was it was topping out um, so it wasn't just topping out on the cable but whether you can see inside here inside there it was actually when you pull it up the bottom of the handbrake was actually touching on this chassis member so I had to do a bit of bit of grinding bit of cutting a little bit of fettling and um, we've got it, got that perfect now. So tuck it back and it's all passed. No other advisories, which was great. But there is one problem. So our lovely race tech technologies dash two dash that we got in there or had in there. What I did was on the laptop, you've got to, you sort of download the software, you do your own configurations, because obviously this is running a bike engine, it just comes with a standard sort of rev counter setup and all this. I've had to sort of calibrate all the, the sensors in the engine and obviously calibrate where the shift lights come on and all that. Um, so I did that, I got delivery of our cable to plug into the dash from the laptop, tried downloading the software, or our configurations from the software and it didn't seem to work and so I tried it two or three times then the screen went blank and nothing else happens now so I don't quite know what I've done I did get in touch with Race Technologies they were very helpful and they said oh dear you better send that back to us so who knows what I've done there whether I blew it up um, so that's gone back already being Christmas, not sure when I'm going to get that back. But what I did do was I sent the file to him with my configurations and he's going to put that on for me because I'm not absolutely brilliant with things like that, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, 
Nice empty space there on the dash at the minute. Fortunately, it does all run um, still. So we don't particularly need that to, to run it. Um, also, our very handy neutral light there, which lights up green when it's in neutral, which is, when I say handy, it is, you know, it's a definite must with the bike engine because obviously you could be in any gear or in between any gear and you wouldn't know where you are in traffic unless you sort of keep forcing it down and you know you're in first. But um, yeah, that all worked absolutely fine. Got it back from the MOT and then it didn't work. So this thing's going to have to go up to our friends at Motor Tech and they're going to have a look at that for us. But it's all going to happen in the, in the new year now, guys, I'm afraid. Um, but hopefully, if we get a dry spell next week, I'm going to be out in this and giving a little test drive and, and see whether, not too wild on the road, obviously, but just see if this roll cage does sturdy it up a bit. I'll be honest with you, even driving steadily up to the MOT centre, it did seem a lot firmer on the back end. So I suspect that this back end was wobbling about all over the shop. Um, so, yeah. As I say, we do finish for Christmas today, guys. Um, but I'm going to be back. We've come back officially on the 4th, but I'm going to be back next week doing some tinkering around here. We've got plenty to do, and I shall hopefully get another couple of videos in before the new year. But until then, guys, if I don't speak to you before, have a lovely Christmas, and thanks ever so much for watching this year. Really do appreciate it, and um, hope you enjoy all our stuff. As I say, Remember to comment down below on any sort of content that you'd like us to do or anything you'd, you'd like to see. The last two or three videos, I've, I've sort of tried to show you some machining processes and the way we go about doing unleaded conversion, etc. So I'll hopefully be doing a lot more of that in the new year. But yeah, so thanks ever so much, guys. Remember to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and uh, look out for some more videos. Take care, guys. Bye.